good morning, Facebook friends. What a blessing it is to see you today. Thank you. We've got, uh, I don't know how many of you were waiting in the waiting room to get into our service today, but I, I, I lost count at 27. So we know there's at least 27 of you watching online at this moment, and there could be some more joining us here in the next five or 10 minutes. But we want to welcome you. We are so thrilled to be here in God's house today. We're uh, celebrating Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And we're thrilled to have you with us today to be part of our service. We will be having communion toward the ends of our service today. So if you'd like to participate with us uh, in doing that, just prepare your elements. And uh, we'll ask God's blessings upon what you have at home as it represents the body of Christ, which is broken for us, and also his precious shed blood for us too. And uh, we're excited that Pastor's Group is going to be opening our service today. We've got a special guest soloist, a surprise soloist, here in just a little bit, too. Uh, uh, I'm just bubbling today. Uh, I, I love the Lord. We love Easter. We love the resurrection. He is our hope. He is our hope in everything. He's the answer in Jesus Christ. We've got some folks who've come back. As you can see the phonics here. Denny Maureen are back from Florida. And uh, you brought this warm weather with you, right? Amen. God bless you. Amen. But we are just thrilled to be in God's house today. So take some time. If you've got prayer requests, put them in the comments. And uh, we'll, we'll get to all of those as best we can. Uh, there's a lot of information going on for, <clears throat> for our online giving friends. We've, uh, we've just instituted online giving. You'll see information on that on the church Facebook page. And we'll be passing out uh, written information on that too. And we can send that to you via email. If you uh, put that in the comments too, we'd be happy to do that. So there's a lot going on, a lot of opportunities. And we also have the drive up community. Even if you're watching this live, you'll have time to get back here uh, in the back church parking lot at noon today. We're having drive-up communion for our social distancing friends and for those that are just afraid to gather again. But that will be happening in the back church parking lot at noon today. So keep that in mind. We'd love to see you there if you can be with us, okay? Uh, we're about uh, three, four minutes away. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. Happy Easter. It's so good. So good to be in God's house worshiping Him. Thank you.
me unmute myself, and we will welcome you. Boy, I tell you, what a, what a day, huh? What a day. Praise God. It's so good to see you today. This uh, lovely ensemble in front that uh, Bill has recruited is called the Pastor's Group. And uh, I still think we should change the name to Bill's Brigade or something like that. Don't you, Mark? That's right. Uh, hey, man, they're going to do a good job. We're going to sing. We're going to open the service, this special Easter service today. Uh, anybody got any complaints on the weather today? Woo-wee, too hot. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody says, turn on the air conditioning, right? No. All right. God bless you. We're going to have a good time in the Lord today. We've got a lot, uh, a lot to do. And we'll be talking about some more of that and what's, what's coming up and uh, the, the drive up communion and all of that here just a little bit. Group's going to open up with uh, uh, a, good, a good number. This is uh, suitable for Easter or any other day of the year. It's called Wonderful Grace of Jesus. We're going to do all three verses. <laughs> Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall my praise begin? Taking away my burden, setting my spirit free. Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me, for even me, broader than the scope of my transgression, sing it, greater than all my sin and shame, oh, magnify the precious Jesus, praise his name. Wonderful grace of Jesus, reaching to all the lost. By it I have been pardoned, saved to the uttermost. Chains have been torn aside. grace of Jesus, sweeter than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me, more than the scope of my transgression, greater more than all my sin and shame, oh, magnify the precious name of of Jesus raging most defiled by its transforming power making him God's dear child purchasing peace and heaven for all eternity or the wonderful grace of Jesus grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, brighter than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me, for even me, broader than the scope of my transgression, sing it, greater than all my sin and shame, oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus. Jesus, praise his name. And all of God. 
God's people said? Amen. 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 Group, thank you. I you think they deserve a hand. Masterful. Thank you so much. Amen. They were awesome. So I've not even been up here for a minute. You already got me teary-eyed. So <laughs> thank you. Amen. And Perry. Well, you need to step right up here and hold that cross up for me. Because the kids were going to do that. Oh. You know, we right over there. Get over there. He listens so well. <laughs> now, hold it. Okay. There we go. So we've been writing on our cross all of our children's names. So we just have to have them in spirit today. Amen. But we do have children. You did not disappoint. Amen. So thank you. Oh, now, now you can sit down. <laughs> He's been trained well, right? Amen. Thank you, Gary. My poor husband, he's going, I've got Kathy up here. It's just going to be hard. Okay. Proceed, dear, please. <laughs> he's trained well, I too. Beg, I beg you. Uh, it, it, it's kind of, again, y'all got me teary-eyed. Um, can we just raise a hand of first-time visitors? Extent, and we've got a beautiful child with us, and I know that you're the friend of BFF. Is that safe to say? Oh, I of, of, of Sophia. So, Leia, right? So, welcome. Oh, welcome. Yeah. So, you, you will give her a. Uh, She's going to get a craft today. I got a the, special one. Okay, got you got it. it. Right. As long as you got it. <laughs> uh, welcome, family. It's Amen. so great to have you all back. Um, I don't know about you, but a year ago, I was a little depressed right now, just a, just a touch, you know, and, and I feel God has truly blessed us. Amen. We're touching side by side today, so um, thank you for being here. Our next church work day is Saturday, April 17th at 8.30, and yesterday was a work week, and the church looks beautiful. Amen. So thank you. Be sure to check the Calling Club names today. Each week, three names are randomly pulled and will appear in our Calling Club section. And the names are? Gail Fronick, Susie Adjoiner, and Dolores Bensey. Give those folks a call, let them know you're thinking about them. If you know anyone who could use encouragement from a Christian perspective, please give Pastor Wendell a name and their information. Contact methods for now are a telephone call, email, or a letter by mail. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to live folks to our church family. Contact forms are available at the Narthex counter. Amen. Women's Guild meets this Thursday. Right, Jan? Yes. It's important, right? You can have your speech. Well, women's, women's Guild meets this Thursday at noon for lunch. We have, we'll have a good lunch and then we'll have our meeting and a devotion. Got a sign up sheet uh, just so you can kind of get a number and uh, all of that on uh, this bulletin board back there on that side. Amen. And Amen. you want to talk about your drive up? Uh, and uh, yeah, after, after service uh, today, well, not immediately after, but at noon, if the, for those of you even that are watching online today, we'll be having drive up communion. Because as we said, there's many folks that are still, for whatever the reasons are, they're, they're fearful of gathering and coming out or haven't gotten their shots yet or, or whatever. So nobody leaves their car. You'll drive up uh, around the back of the church and we'll have spots there. Uh, I'm going to have a little microphone set up where you can hear me. Everybody stays in their car and we'll distribute communion cups. And I've got uh, just a, a mini program that uh, we'll perhaps uh, try to sing a song together. And uh, then we'll have communion and, and a prayer and uh, we'll send you on your way. But we wanted everybody to have the opportunity, especially in light of this past year and what this COVID pandemic has brought, we wanted everybody to have the opportunity to be at church in some way, shape, form, or fashion today for Easter. 
So we're encouraging you, if you're watching online, we're, we're doing it at noon, so you have a chance to, uh, to be a part of this service and come for the communion at noon as well. So we'd love to see you. If you're watching online right now, just come, stay in your car, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be a blessing to you as you will to us by coming out at noon. So thank you. I believe we do have snacks today, correct? After? Uh, yeah, there's going to be uh, afterwards. Anybody, Carol or Judy or someone, want to comment on that? Uh, uh, I think we're having a we little. Have goodies today. Go ahead, Carol. There will be a brunch served downstairs for any anybody that would like to come down. There is just coffee if you'd like that, but you're also welcome to stay to eat with us. Everybody's welcome. Okay. Amen. Amen. So that will be after the service. So if you're here, you're invited. You're welcome. And uh, we, we are practicing, you know, to the best of our abilities, you know, social distancing. We want everybody to be comfortable with where they're at and what they're doing. And uh, when you get to your spot in your pews, I mean, uh, the, the masks can, can come off when you're in your little bubble. But as we're wandering around in the church, we are still encouraging you know, folks to wear their masks and to be uh, to socially distance and to be safe uh, to, the, to the fullest extent that we're able to. Because we want to, uh, your, your health and safety is important to us there. So thank you, Carol. Looking ahead, April 25th, we will officially welcome new members. Not too late if you are seeking to join our church. See Pastor Wendell for details. Amen. And Jenny, you want to talk about these beautiful flowers? Happy birthday, Grandma. Amen. Amen. They're, they're lovely beautiful. flowers. And the, the I'll, it's, just, it's just breathtaking now. Yeah, you know, we talked about they're so happy. Uh, we got a little ray of sunshine right there for Amen. Amen. Okay. Did I miss anything? All right. I think we've got uh, one more. We can throw this in right now. Gail's birthday was yesterday. Gail is, is, is ill today, so she's not with us. She's probably watching online. So happy birthday, Gail. And uh, Mark, is it Mark Snedden? Is it your birthday today? Or is it another Mark? It's Friday. Oh, it's Friday. Close uh, enough. Uh, close enough for government work, as they say. Yeah. All right, real quick, Laura, let's uh, do a quick birthday shout for Gail and Mark. <laughs> you, but I'm finding that uh, as I get older, birthdays are becoming less important to me. <laughs> I'm not really <laughs> celebrating them as, as I used to. But anyway, now Mark, he's just a young whippersnapper still, so he's still, still celebrating them, right? Gail, too. All right, happy birthday to you, too. Kathy, go ahead and lead us off with our call to worship. If you'd stand with us, please, if you're able. If you're able to stand, call to worship, please. On this Easter morning of fleeting darkness, we uplift our voices in praise and our hearts in joy. We come into your presence with singing. Hosanna, hallelujah forever and ever. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Now hymn 151. I know we ran out of some, so if you... Some of you have them in your bulletin. Some of them you'll have to use your hymnal. 151, low in the grave he lays. Laura, let's do one and three. One and three. <laughs>
from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose, he arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose on that last. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive honor and glory. All power is given to our great God. The Father sent his Son to be Savior of the world. Jesus is risen today. He is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. Now for passing of the peace. Turn to someone to your right and left and just say hi.
at this? Or? But you don't get to keep it, sorry. <laughs> the goal, you like them, huh? The children's offering today is for the Heifer Fund, which is our international ministry of helping families overseas. So whatever you give today in the cups will be going toward the Heifer Fund ministry today. We're done with you. <laughs> uh, all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, this time we've got a special treat. I find that surprises are always the best thing. Uh, we've asked, Miss Anna was up singing with, our, with the group, and uh, it's just always a blessing to have Anna with us. We've asked her to come, and she's going to sing a cappella. Uh, the, uh, the name of the song is Were You There? Were You There? So, Anna, you come. If you want to sing into this microphone, we'd, we'd love that. Well, for our online friends, that would be, a, would be the blessing if she...
a few people that uh, I, after I hear them sing, I wonder why I even try. <laughs> She's one of them. She is one of them. Bless your heart. Uh, what, what a wonderful, wonderful song message. Bill, would you come quickly uh, at this time? Bill's going to do our scripture reading for us this morning. As we said, Gail is, is out. Hmm? Uh, you can if you, if you don't care. Just speak loudly into the microphone. That's right. I mean, everybody says they don't need the microphone, but we're doing this for our online friends so they can hear because we got microphones that are going that way. And uh, trust me. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. All right, from Luke 24, 1 through 9, the resurrection. Amen. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day arise. And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Amen. Bill, thank you. Thank you this morning. All right. Woo! Boy. I, I tell you, it, it's been, been a while since I've looked out and seen this, and seen this. What a blessing you are to me. Thank you for being here today. Thank you that are watching online as well, but uh, uh, to, to just, we just praise God. We're working toward getting back to, to normal. We're working toward uh, uh, you know, sharing the gospel. We're working toward a lot of different things, and we're just glad that on this Easter morning, I remember, I remember Easter last year. We had, uh, <laughs> this is how many people we had in service. Because the mandates were in effect, uh, the, the lockdown was on and everything. They said we could have 10 or less. We had five here. We broadcast the service, uh, started broadcasting services online on the Facebook page. And uh, we've had service here every single week, uh, you know, one way or another. The doors have been open. We just praise God that we've been able to do that. And we're thankful for you today. And I've got, uh, got God's message for you today from the Word of God. The scripture that Bill read for us, of course, is, is the crux of the day. It's the crux of what we want to convey to you. But I want, I want to point out a couple of things there. In the first, uh, first verse of chapter 24 in Luke, it said, these ladies, this group of ladies, uh, several Marys, you know, Mary Magdalene, uh, uh, there's a Joanna in there. Verse 10 tells you all the names of the ladies that were there, and there's some that aren't even mentioned. But all these ladies came to the tomb on that first day of the week. They came. They showed up. They showed up. And uh, they, they found a stone rolled away, and they entered into the tomb. So, I mean, there's action verbs in all of this that they came, they showed up, they entered in, and they found something, and they begin to wonder. The, the word Bill used was perplexed. They were confused. They were perplexed about what was going on here because usually when you enter into a tomb, Perry, what, what should you find in a tomb? If you enter into a tomb with somebody who's been buried, right? You should find a body, right? You should find a body. I put Perry on the spot. Sorry, buddy. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> but, but he's used to it. He's used to But you go into a tomb, you should find a body. There's no body. They don't see anybody. But they hear the voices of, of two men in bright apparel, angels, beginning to speak with them, reminding them, saying, remember the words that he said to you. 
Remember the words that he said. And, and that's the keynote here. As we talk about our Savior's victory, our Savior's triumph, we want to take you through some verses real quick. If you have your Bibles, follow along. If not, just make mental notes as we go through this. Remember the words that he said, how he spake about this time and this day. There's a lot of things in my daily life and possibly in your daily life that catch us by surprise. This event that we're celebrating today should have caught no one by surprise. Jesus talked about it. He had predicted it. Uh, he had expounded upon it. He kept preparing the hearts of his disciples for that particular day when he would raise again from the dead. He, he, he prepared them for it. And when these angels are, are talking to these women, I mean, the ladies are afraid. They drop to their knees and bow their faces and cover their faces. And the angels say, you know, why seek ye the living among the dead? As you're talking with Perry a moment ago, you know, you don't go into a tomb looking for someone who's alive, do you? You don't go visit someone uh, at the cemetery and sit there by their grave. To, to, you, you talk with them metaphorically, but they're not really there. These angels say, well, why are you seeking the living among the dead today? Don't you remember, verse 6, he's not here, he is risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet with you in Galilee. I want to take you back just a few, uh, uh, a few chapters over in the book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 40. The Pharisees there, the religious leaders of, of that day, they were talking with Jesus and they were seeking a sign from him. And Jesus' response in Matthew 12 and verse 40 was, says, so as Jonah... We all know who Jonah was, right? Jonah and the whale. So as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus said these words well before the events of today. Well before that first Easter Sunday as he was talking to the Pharisees. And then again, in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 21, as he is talking to Peter and talking about how he will build his church upon, not on Peter as the rock, but upon himself as the rock, but he was talking about building his church. And he began to talk to the disciples about this day, this day. There in Matthew 16, 21, he says, and from that time forth, Jesus began to show his disciples, how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and raised again the third day. The message that the angels are saying to these ladies who have come to the tomb, remember the things that he has said. Remember the words that he has said. He predicted this. He told you this was going to happen. And if you're like me in all your encounters with God, there's one thing I have found out about God. He does not lie. He does not lie. He always tells the truth. He always has my best interests at heart, even in times when I don't understand it. So as, as these ladies are there, as the, they're kneeling, the angels are saying, remember, remember these things. Remember these things. In another instance there in Matthew 17, verses 22 and 23, Jesus had just cast some demons out of a child. And he speaks to his disciples after he, he, he did that. He says in verse 22 of Matthew 17, And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of men. He must be betrayed into the hands of men. And they shall kill him. And on the third day, he will be raised again. And the reaction of the disciples was they were exceedingly sorry. They were sorry. They were sad over all of that. But he was telling them what was going to happen. Not one time. Not two times. But this is the third time. And he continues on here in Matthew 20. This is all well before the resurrection day. 
It says there's a parable where Jesus was talking to the disciples about sending laborers into the vineyard, some that he sent in, in, in the early morning hours, and others he sent at noon, and others he hired on later that day, and everybody got the same wage. So, I mean, there was a story that he was, he was telling in that parable and a message that he was conveying that, uh, you know, God, God is open to everybody. When, whenever you come, he just wants you to come. But Jesus segued from that parable to teach the disciples again in Matthew 20, verses 18 and 19, he says, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and to the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him, and the third day he will rise again. He keeps telling them, this day will come. In Matthew 26, he speaks to the disciples concerning judgment and predicts his death again. He says, you know that two days uh, coming is the feast of the Passover and the Son of Man will be crucified. He keeps reinforcing that it's going to happen. It's as good as if it, it has already happened. And he keeps telling them that. And these angels are reminding these ladies, remember what he said. Remember what he said. And then Jesus in John chapter 2 and verse 19, he had just driven those money changers out of the temple. You know, he says, you know, you're making God's house a den of thieves. He just driven them out. And the Jewish leaders at that point ask him, well, you know, if you're so high and mighty, give us a sign. Give us a sign of who you are. And Jesus said unto them, destroy this temple, meaning the temple of his body. Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Wow. All of these, all of these verses that I've just given to you talk about him leading up to that Time that day, that first Easter Sunday, that Easter sunrise. But you know, these, the, these verses have been for the ladies to remember that were at the tomb. These verses have been for, for those that loved him to recall. You know, there's, there's another group on the other side of the, of the aisle, as uh, our political friends like to say, that the, the other side of the aisle, in Matthew 27, after... He was crucified. There's a group that, that went to Pontius Pilate, went to the Roman officials, and they remembered as well. Listen to Matthew 27, 62 through 66. His enemies remembered too. Now on the next day that followed the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate saying, Sir, we remember that this deceiver, they're calling Jesus a deceiver, said that while he was yet alive, after three days, I will rise again. We remember that he said that. He said, now what we're asking you, Pilate, is command, therefore, that this, uh, th this graveside, this sepulcher, as it's called, be made sure with a guard until the third day, lest uh, his disciples come and steal him away. And uh, say unto the people, he's risen from the dead. He's not here anymore. And uh, this uh, last error will be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, you've got your guards. Go do what you can do. So they went and they made the graveside sure. And they put a stone in front of it with the seal of the governor. Even Jesus' enemies remembered that he said this was going to happen. They remember it. And the triumph of our Savior is that when he says something is going to happen, it always does. It always does. And that's the promise and the hope that, that this Easter brings to us, that he loves us. I don't, I don't know about you, but I think I speak for most when I say this past year has been a, been a hard year on many of us. It's been a hard year. And, and there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. We're not there yet, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. But we have hope in Christ Jesus. 
He is my hope. He is, he, he is everything to me. And I want the message to you this morning is that we need to remember that he doesn't forget us. He didn't forget those ladies who had come to the tomb. He remembered them. He remembers you. He knows exactly who you are, where you're at, and what you're going through. And he wants to meet you at the point of that need. And that's what this first Easter is all about. He died so that you can have, you can have hope in Jesus. We're thankful that we can gather as we are today. We're thankful that we have the hope in Jesus Christ. Me in and of, of myself, I've got no power. I've got no authority. I've got no wisdom. I've got no knowledge. My hope, my hope is in the Lord and in his word. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die on that cross behind me, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The message of the cross is that we're accountable for Jesus' death. The message of the cross is that he's paid the sin debt for us. When the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 6, the wages of the cost of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That makes us accountable to receive his gift into our life. I don't know where you're at spiritually today. I don't know what your walk with the Lord is or isn't. But I want you to remember that God always keeps his word. We are accountable. Do you know him as your savior today? If not, seek me afterwards. I'll take the Bible. I'll show you what the Bible says, not what I think or what the church believes or, or what anybody else. We'll show you what God's word says, what God says about salvation. He died for you. He died for you. He went to this cross for you. And that song that we sang here Thursday night when we had our Monday Thursday service, when he was on the cross, you and I were on his mind. That's our hope in Jesus. Do you know him as your Lord and Savior? Have you trusted him? Have you asked him for forgiveness of your sins? You don't have to share anything with me, but God knows your hearts already. Would you do that today? It'll be the best Easter ever if you do. Maybe you just want to draw back to him. You want to rededicate your life. You're a follower of Christ. You want to rededicate your heart to him to be a better Example, better husband, better wife, better son, better daughter, better friend. Sharing the gospel with people, showing the difference Jesus can make. Just rededicate your heart and soul to him if you know him as your Savior today. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you so much for your attention this morning. We've got uh, real quick, we're going to do just one verse, Laura, of 159. One verse of 159. Stand if you'd like to. 159. Because he lives, God sent his son. They called him Jesus. At this time, we want to call out. We're praying. I know I heard that uh, Catherine had said that Roy Rule had called her and wished her a happy Easter. Roy, if you're watching, 
live right now. God bless you, brother. Happy Easter to you. Roy is recovering from uh, uh, pancreatic cancer, so we're praying that uh, that continues to go well. We're praying, Steve Becker, if you're watching today, brother, God bless you. We we're praying for you and for Robin. And so Steve is home in, in hospice care, and uh, we're just thankful, thankful for every day that God blesses Steve with at this point. Keep, keep Steve and Robin in your prayers. And we've got many others on our prayer list that uh, you've submitted that uh, are going through cancers and things like that. My, my oldest girl, Melissa, took her, uh, her sister-in-law, Desiree, that we have prayed for in the past. Desiree lost her leg to cancer not too long ago, and she wasn't feeling well this past week, and uh, they found another spot on her lung. So I'll pray uh, we're going to add Desiree back to our prayer list. For, uh, for cancer treatment too. And there, there are just so many others. Do you have others specifically this morning as we, we quickly move into our prayer time? Anyone? 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 Is there anybody online, uh, Debbie? Or do you see any? Uh... Uh, no prayer requests, but John Lawton did say that it was a, uh, hit 100 degrees right now, so we're going to hold for that. Yeah, we, uh, we really feel sorry for you, Don. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, we could have used some of that a couple months ago. God bless the lot of us out there. And, uh, <laughs> amen, amen. Any, any prayer requests today? Okay. How about unspoken? Unspoken, okay. God sees your hands and your hearts. Thank you for these. Let's take a moment for silent prayer. Then I will pray and uh, we'll recite the Lord's Prayer before our ushers come this morning. Lord God, we thank you for this time. We thank you that we're able to assemble, Lord, as we are. We pray for your hand of protection to be upon us. We pray for your strength and your guidance. And Lord, for each family, each home that's represented here within the walls of, of this precious church. We pray, God, that we would uh, carry the spirit of your resurrection to our back to our homes, to our places of business or jobs or schools or to our neighbors, uh, to, to our family, Lord, that uh, the world would know that we are Christians, Lord, by, by our love. Help us to be those examples. We continue to pray for our friends, Roy Rule, Lord, and, and for, uh, for, for Steve Becker, Lord, and we also remember uh, Jim Pappenheim, Lord, as he continues to recover from the, the, the throat cancer that he had. He is doing well in con conversation with him the other day. We remember him, we remember Dean Downey, Lord, uh, who's going through some, uh, some, some issues of his own. We just pray and uplift these brothers. And God, uh, we've got various sisters uh, that are in need as well. We pray that you meet all these at the points of their need. And for each hand that is uplifted for unspoken, you know these hands and hearts. And we just pray that you touch as you're able, Father. And as you see, see the needs. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God's people said together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Ushers, would you come at this time? And for those of you that are watching online, on our Facebook page there, just, just this week, we have launched a new online giving platform. It's called Easy Tithe. If you click on that, it will, it will take you to a page uh, that's called Give Now, and uh, you can enter following the various prompts on there. We spell some of it out in the... Uh, on the Facebook page. It's also on our website, and we've got written literature uh, talking about it, too. We're going to see how this all goes and, and what the need is, but we want you to be able to help uh, financially, as many have asked, uh, how can I help? And so we're trying to make it uh, as easy and seamless as possible. So if you've had any questions on that, see me, and we'll, uh, we'll try to answer them for you. Ushers, go ahead. <laughs>
Father God, again, thank you for this day you've blessed us with. Thank you for the resurrection. Thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. This time our council will come. We will observe the Lord's Supper. We do offer options. Options. We have the prepackaged cups. If you would like a prepackaged cup, just simply slip your hand up and hold it here just for a moment. I see Irene here. If you'd like a prepackaged cup, we will see that you get that. It has been touched by no one. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right. We invite everybody who is a, is a believer in Jesus Christ to participate. With us in Holy Communion, you are part of God's precious family. Amen. last supper Jesus took the bread and he broke it. He said this is bread represents my body which will be broken for you. We will eat it in remembrance of him. Let's ask God's blessing upon this bread and for those of you watching at home that are prepared elements this prayer covers yours as well. Let's pray. Father God again thank you for this opportunity for the symbolism of the bread representing your body broken for us. As we do eat it, help us to remember, Lord, your words and your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers. Jesus took the bread and we broke it. He said, this bread represents my body broken for you. Eat it in remembrance of me. Amen. Let's 
Scripture says, in like manner, he took the cup. He said, this cup represents my blood, which will be spilled for you. As often as you drink it, you do show forth the promise of my coming again. Our outer rings are grape juice. Our inner rings are wine. So please choose appropriately and accordingly. Let's ask God's blessing upon the wine and the juice that represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, again, thank you for this opportunity to worship and fellowship for this first Easter. Lord, that uh, on that resurrection day, thank you for your spilled blood as it's represented by this grape juice and this wine. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Jesus addressed the disciples. He said, as often as you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. You stand with me. Let's recite our prayer of thankfulness together in unison. We give thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Council, thank you. Let's remain standing for our closing hymn. We're going to do one verse. 
One verse of this one is hymn number 149. I'll let you pick which verse we do. You want to do the first or the last? Do I hear a hand for the first? Okay, first verse it is then. I serve a risen Savior. He lives. Resurrection Day. He's alive and he is in my heart and my prayer is that you know him. You know him as your Lord today. Thank you so much for being with us. The families that have come to gather and, and be with other families, thank you. If you get a chance, be sure you sign our, our little packets in the pew there so we can have a record of your visit or sign uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the page in the back uh, there. It's, it's a little... <laughs> I can see it, but I just can't think of the name of it right now. But uh, we, we just want to know that you are here and, and, and rejoice in your visit with us. If you have any questions about the church or uh, uh, anything like that, please let us know. We'll be happy, happy, happy to talk to you about that. All minds clear? Yep. Yep. Amen. Yep. Enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. And thank you. Several of you said you're going to help with the, uh, the drive-up communion in about an hour, so we're excited about that. And everybody is... As Carol uh, said, everybody that would like to is invited downstairs for, you know, if it's, it's the women at St. John's fixing food, it's always good. So you're invited for that. So come down. If uh, We've got an elevator here. If you have trouble with stairs and stuff like that, uh, we'd love to have you stay. All right, let's close in prayer. Father God, again, thank you for this day. Thank you for this, uh, that first Easter. And we thank you for that Jesus is at your right hand right now making intercession Lord, for each one of us. He loves us. He died for us. And I thank you for the promise of your word. Help us to remember, remember how much he loves us in these days and weeks ahead in our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Walk with the king and be of good cheer, Jesus said. I've overcome the world. You're dismissed.
folks that are still watching, God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We still have time to get to our online.